Hi everyone, so there is an impossible trinity which exists when it comes to international economics and that really relates to a country's choice of the exchange rate. A country cannot have a perfect regime, okay? There is no perfect regime that actually exists. So therefore countries must make a choice as to what is most suitable for them in their given economic circumstances. Now, countries are able to actually get two out of three of this impossible trinity. So it's impossible to have all three of the following. Free capital flows, a fixed exchange rate, and independent monetary policy. You just cannot manage all three areas there, okay? Um, so let's take a look at to, uh, the reasons for this. Firstly, if we consider free capital flows, if you have free capital flows, it means there is an absence of capital controls. There are no restrictions in terms of actually converting money into a foreign currency, and you make your currency readily available for such transactions. Uh, and it also means that you've got a fully liberalized capital account, and that means you can attract both long-term inward uh, foreign direct investment into your country, but you can also attract a lot of shorter term speculative investment into your country as well. Okay, now um, that short term speculative investment may go into uh, the stock market, it could go into bond markets within uh, your local country there. Okay, so um, in essence, money is readily convertible and suddenly you can uh, enjoy big, big swathes of money coming into your country but you can also notice big withdrawals coming out of your country and this can pose big problems for uh, countries that are developing and have very little uh, experience of actually dealing with such large volumes of money. Okay, uh, very uh, immature financial sectors really. Okay, uh, so we've got free capital flows there and we've got a fixed exchange rate, okay? So this is quite similar to the system that which actually runs in Hong Kong. Hong Kong enjoys free capital flows, it's got a very open capital account and it's also got a fixed exchange rate uh, with regard to the US dollar. And it's actually, I believe, the uh, longest standing pegged rate against the US dollar in existence. Now, to actually manage this scenario, Hong Kong have, uh, have developed a huge, huge quantity of foreign exchange reserves. Uh, they actually have uh, $1 for every $1 worth of Hong Kong uh, currency in circulation at any given time. So it means their domestic currency is fully backed by their international uh, reserves. And that enables uh, confidence to be maintained that they can always buy back their currency uh, and hold its value. Okay, so Hong Kong provides us uh, with a nice suitable example there. Um, some other countries have tried this previously. Uh, LEDCs have tried this and uh, they, they've really had a lot of problems when it's come to the free capital flows that have flowed into uh, the country and caused a lot of uh, damage to the financial sector as suddenly that money has been withdrawn. And we'll look at that in the lesson on the Asian financial crisis. Okay, so then if we shift to uh, uh, China and the regime that actually runs in China. Well, China doesn't allow the, that those free capital flows to actually uh, come into their country uh, with ease and uh, there are restrictions in place to actually stop uh, hot money flows coming into uh, China. Uh, so there are capital controls here, but it does give them independence of monetary policy. Hong Kong, meanwhile, have generally, generally, not so much in the last year, which concerned a few people actually, uh, but generally Hong Kong's interest rates, of course, have remained on a parity level with uh, the US Federal Reserve, okay? So that it means that whenever the US has uh, changed its rate, interest rates, uh, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority has also done uh, something very, very similar, okay? Uh, they've chosen not to do that in recent times and that's meant that they are now at the bottom band of their actual uh, exchange rate uh, regime, okay? So some people are actually questioning now whether Hong Kong can maintain it uh, when they're trying to actually have some independence over their monetary policy. But nevertheless, because China do not allow money to easily flow in and flow out of their country, then it means that, uh, yeah, 
uh, they can maintain some independence over that, well, a great deal of independence over that monetary policy and maintain that fixed rate. Okay, so most MEDCs tend to opt for this sort of scenario though, so uh, where they have the benefits of an independent monetary policy and they have free capital flows. But of course, uh, when it comes to uh, that independence and monetary policy, when you change interest rates, that has an impact on the, uh, the fixed exchange rate because of the freedom of capital flows that actually exists. So just recently, it was expected that the UK was going to uh, increase interest rates in May uh, 2018, as we are now. Uh, but yet our economic growth data has come out very, very weak for the first quarter of the year at just 0.1%. And as a direct consequence of that, um, the uh, Bank of England said, look, you know, we will not be increasing interest rates uh, and all the market got that picture anyway. And uh, as a direct consequence of that, it meant that our exchange rate depreciated slightly. It came down from about 1.4 down to about 1.37 per dollar. OK, um, so that independence of monetary policy and the freedom of capital flows to actually go take money wherever uh, they want to place it, of course, you are going to seek out the best monetary policy returns, the best interest rate returns that you can with that money if you're saving it in foreign currencies. Okay, so really this does highlight the choices that countries need to make and this is really, really significant when it comes to LEDCs that opt for this sort of area. We know there are potential vulnerabilities with uh, LEDCs uh, and developing economies who are likely to have a lack of experience in really being able to cope with uh, big, big inflows of uh, hot money capital. Okay, so there could be some restrictions that are placed upon that, um, which almost sort of moves it towards uh, a sort of Chinese system. Anyway, you know, the, the main takeaways here, there is no perfect regime, and therefore the choice depends upon priorities and circumstances. But if you get an essay on exchange rates and it's asking you, you know, about the optimal regime or anything like that, this is a wonderful concept to actually evaluate uh, that there is no perfect regime, of course, okay? And all countries must make a choice. Okay, thanks ever so much, guys. Hope that was helpful.